Welcome back. Let's cover arrays and array lists. Arrays or array lists is just a list of things. It could be a list of strings, a list of integers, etc. The universal symbol for an array in every programming language is square brackets. Here's how we create an array. We say the data type, so string, then square brackets, that says it's an array. We give it a name. We then say equals new string array, and then we pass in how big we want the array to be. So in this case, we said three, which means it can hold three items. We can then assign each index a value. So the first index starts at zero, we assign it the value of peach, and then the second index, which is at index one, is strawberry. Arrays are just like strings in the sense that at index zero, that's the first index. It then starts counting up from there. And in this case, we didn't assign anything to index two, so it just stays null. Okay, let's see it in action. So string, open and close square brackets, give it a name, is equal to new string array, and we'll say it's size three, and don't forget your semicolon. We can then start assigning values. Fruits at index zero should equal peach, and fruits at index one should equal strawberry. Now this is an important point. If I print out fruits, I actually don't get anything sensible. This is due to Java's toString method. So to actually see what's in our array, we have to say arrays dot to string, and then we pass in fruits. We're gonna cover why this is later when we cover objects. But once we do that, we can see that the first index is peach, and then strawberry, and then we didn't assign anything, so the last one is null. Of course, you can reassign values. So if I say fruits at index one again is equal to banana, at this instance, at this line, index one has strawberry, but then we change it to banana. So by the time it gets down here, it's gonna print out the reassigned value. We can of course come down here and assign the last value. And now our array is full of values. This is a very important point. If you try to access a value that doesn't exist, for example, there's only three, zero, one, and two. If I try to access index three, which doesn't exist, notice we get an exception. Index three is out of bounds for length three. This is really important. If you ever see this exception, you know that you're trying to access something in your array that doesn't exist. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Another way to do the same thing is instead of saying new string array and then assigning all of the values, you can do it all in one step. You can do that using curly braces. And then you just pass in the values. So peach, comma, strawberry, comma, banana, and then for good measure, we'll also include null at the end. And we get the exact same thing. So if you already know what your values are going to be, you can do it all in one line using this syntax. You can do the exact same thing with integers. We'll say one, two, three and null, and we'll print out again arrays to string and pass in my numbers, and we can see the values here. Another important thing to note is that this will work with the primitive data type. So if I change this to int, it will still work, but of course ints cannot hold null, so you get an error. 
So if I delete this and then print out arrays to string again with my numbers primitive, you get the correct values. So arrays will work with strings. They will work with baby ints and big ints, and of course, all the other data types. So in your homework, you will have more exercises to do with arrays, but we're actually going to move on. So arrays are actually not used very often. Array lists are more functional. So with an array, you can't change the size of the array after instantiation. So if you need to change, it's really hard to do so. There's also no built-in helper methods, which array lists do give you. So here's how you would use an array list. You would say array list. You then have to give it the data type. In this case, it's a string. You give it a name, like fruits, and then you have to instantiate it. So equals new array list. You can then add from there. So fruits.add. So this is a built-in method that comes from array list. You can then add a bunch of stuff like strings, including null. OK, let's see it in action. I'm going to say array list. I then have to use the angle brackets and type string. That's our type. We'll give it a name. Fruits is equal to new array list. Notice you have to include the angle brackets. And then you also have to include open and close parentheses and then a semicolon. So quite a lot of syntax. If you notice it's highlighted in red, it gives you this little hint where we want to import our class. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. That then makes it turn white. And if you scroll up, when you clicked that import button, what happens is it automatically added this import java.util.arraylist. So if you didn't see that, go ahead and add this import at the top. Essentially what's happening is this array list code was coded up by someone else. And what we're telling our program to do is, hey, go get that other person's code so that we can use it here. Let's go ahead and add a few things to our array list. So I'm going to do fruits. I'm then going to call the dot operator, just like you'd call a method. So then I'm going to say add. Notice there's a bunch of options. I'm going to go ahead and select the first one. And then I'm going to give it a string of peach. And don't forget your semicolon. I'll go ahead and add another one. Fruits dot add. And it can hold null. So we'll say fruits dot add. And I'll just put in null. I'm then going to print out fruits. Notice we don't have to call a special method. We can just straight up print out fruits because the built in two string method is really good for array lists. Again, we'll cover this when we get to objects. When I run this, I can see peach, strawberry, and null. Now, this is a very important point. The way the add method works is once it already has an array list, it adds a new one and it adds it to the end. So if I do fruits.add and add a new one, it's going to add it after null. And you can see that here. If I want to add it at a specific index, I can call a different add method. So what I can do is say fruits dot add and I'm going to select this one. It tells you that you have to give it an index and you have to give it an element. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to add it, let's say at index zero. So that means it's going to go to the front of the list, comma, and then I give it pineapple. So what we did is we called someone else's method. Remember, we covered methods a few videos ago, and then we passed in the parameters. We passed in the parameter of index zero and the parameter of a string pineapple. What this method is now going to do, it's going to put pineapple here at the front and everyone else is going to get shifted over. I'm going to go ahead and delete a couple of these. And now we have two. There's a lot of other methods built into array lists. So if I do fruits dot, we can see size. So if we want to know how big our array list is, we can call this one. 
and I'm going to say integer size is equal to fruits.size. So now I'm storing it in a variable called size. I'm going to print out size. And then let's call another method. I'm going to say boolean is empty is equal to fruits dot is empty. And I'm going to call this method. This returns a boolean true if the array list is empty. And then I'm also going to print out is empty. So we can see we have the size of our array list and we have false it is not empty. I'm going to delete these again. If I do fruits, I can then call a bunch of other things. I can call remove. This will remove an object. So if I type in peach, we added it up here, but we're going to remove it down here. It's going to loop through the entire list looking for this thing, and then it will remove it. So by the time the list gets all the way down here, peach was removed. Now if I pass in something else like this, there is no value in our array list that has this. So if I run this, it didn't find it, but it still worked. It just kept moving. I can also call a different method, remove and give it zero. What this will do is it will remove whatever is at index zero. In this case, it's peach, so it will remove peach. Now, if you remember, we did get an index out of bounds a few minutes ago. Let's see what happens if we give it an index that makes no sense. So we give it an index of five, even though there's only two items in here. So this is at index zero. This is at index one. So this should not work. Let's see what happens. Exception in main Java, index out of bounds for length two. So it says your array list is only length two, and you're trying to access something that is out of bounds. So if you see this error, that's what's happening. I can also call clear. This just deletes everything in the array list. So by the time it gets down here, there's now nothing in here. And we can see this is the universal symbol for an array list, and this means empty array list, meaning there's nothing in it. Let's just browse a few more. There's remove all, there's remove if, there's sort, you can do a sublist, you can add first or add last, you can ask if it contains something. So there's a ton of methods here built in for you ready to use. Here are the most useful methods in ArrayList in my opinion. So add, remove, and there's a bunch of add and removes depending on specifically what you're trying to do. Dot size, that one's really useful. Is the array list empty? Index of, this one tells you, okay, if there is peach, what is the index in the array of that value? Contains, does this array contain this thing? And then get, get me the value at index, say, one. So here's a simple table just explaining the difference between array and array list. So both arrays and array lists, you can assign or change values. But an array cannot change the size after you instantiate it, whereas an array list is dynamic, you can add more things after it. An array does not have built-in helper methods. An array list does. So nine times out of 10, you're going to use an array list because it has all this extra built-in functionality. And lastly, let's revisit the main method. So you should recognize what this is now. String open bracket, close bracket, that's an array. And args means arguments. So essentially what's happening here is if we run our Java application in a certain way, we could pass it arguments in the form of an array of strings. We'll cover this later, but this should demystify another part of the main method. Okay, we really just scratched the surface. Do the homework. There's going to be a ton of questions to make sure you really feel comfortable with both arrays and array lists. Good luck.